What's the next thing I need to write? Minus. Okay, a minus sign. Here's the big deal about this problem. You gotta realize that the minus sign is gonna be there regardless of what y is. Are you following me on that? Yes. No matter what, that's gonna be the way it is. Next, we look at the value of y. How much is y? So this doesn't count for that negative. This counts for the minus. Now for the y, I need to write, okay, negative 3 tenths. And just to be safe, I'm going to put that in parentheses so I don't get those two things confused. Are you going to change it? We are. That's a minus. That's a negative. Let's think back to our rules for addition and subtraction. What do you have when you have a minus and negative? You could change that to a plus, right? Sure. In fact, you have a common denominator. I want you to see this part. You have options here. You have choices. You can change this to a plus right now, and you'll be just fine. Or, look at the board. Or, if you do the next step, you could do the common denominator of 10, and on the top you'd get negative 8 minus negative 3. Do you guys see that? Minus negative. Doesn't that change to a plus anyway? Yeah. Yeah. You do it either way. I don't care where you do it, as long as you realize that a minus and negative does give you that plus. I'll leave it this way since I already wrote it. We'll do negative 8 plus 3 over 10. If you changed this to a plus, if you change this to a plus first, you'd still get the same exact thing. Verify that for me on your paper if you did that. Okay? And lastly, what's uh, negative 8 plus 3? Negative 5. 5 tenths or negative 5 tenths? Negative 5 tenths. You simplify it? What do you think? Yes. Yeah. We have negative 5 tenths. We better know how to simplify that. What's that equal to? One half. Yeah, we divide both the top and the bottom by 5. Well, I can't do that by 5. We get 5 divided by negative 5 divided by 5 is negative 1. 10 divided by 5 is 2. That's as simple as we can make it. You get negative 1 half. Raise your hand if you feel okay with this, these fraction examples. Now, the question I have for you is, do we always get a common denominator right off the bat? Are all of our fractions always going to be 11, 11, 11? No. No, or 10 and 10. No. Sometimes we get fractions that don't have a common denominator. In that case, for instance, if I change this to like 7, would you be able to subtract those fractions? No. The first two? Yeah. The last one? No. Not like it is. We've got to find a way to find a common denominator. If we're not given one, we've got to find one. Because the only way we can add and subtract fractions is if we have one. So we're going to talk about right now how you find the least common denominator. We don't want the biggest one, we want the least, the smallest one. So we're trying to find the smallest shared denominator, lowest common denominator. So least common denominator, denominator is the bottom of fraction, common means shared, least means smallest. And we abbreviate this usually with LCD. We'll be using that a lot in this class, LCD. What this is, least means smallest, the smallest number that has both denominators as a factor. What that means is that both denominators divide this number and it's the smallest one that that happens. smallest number that has, I'm going to say instead of both, we could be dealing with more than one fraction, so that has all of the denominators as a factor.
let's look at 7 eighths and 11 sixteenths. Now, I'm not looking to add or subtract those. I'm just looking at the fractions, okay? Firstly, would you be able to add or subtract those the way they are right now? No. Why not? Perfect. So we look at that and go, okay, we got 8, we got 16, it's not the same. I can't add them, I can't subtract them. What we're looking for is how to find the common denominator. The first part of that is identifying what it should be. Now here's how we do it. I'm going to give you some steps to do this. The first steps you're going to do, you're going to identify the largest denominator. I want to tell you there's other methods to do this. This one's the fastest. It works for numbers that are relatively small. Start with the largest denominator. Which one is the largest denominator here? 16. 16. We're going to start with 16. We're going to find some multiples of that denominator. Are you familiar with what a multiple is? Yeah. Are you sure, everybody? Yeah. Nod your head if you're familiar with a multiple. Shake it if you're kind of like, ah, I don't remember. It's fine if you don't remember. We'll go over it right now if you don't. Okay, here's a multiple. Um, I, I'll, I'll start and you can fill in the rest of it. We're going to do the multiples of four. The multiples of four are, the first one is four. The next one is eight. What's the next multiple? Twelve. And then? Sixteen. And then? And then? 24. And then? 28. There's only a couple people doing this. Let's do the multiples of 7 now. The first multiple of 7 is 7. What's the next one? 14. What's the, hang on, wait, wait, let people think. What's the next one? What's the next one? 28. And then? 35. Those are multiples. It's the numbers you get when you multiply by sequential integers or whole numbers. So you take, if we're talking about 7, 7 times 1 is 7, 7 times 2 is 14, then 21, then 24, then 35, and so on. Those are multiples of a number. What we're doing, we're looking for the largest denominator, which is 16. We're going to start finding multiples of that number. The first multiple that all the other denominators divide, that is your LCD. The first multiple that all the other denominators divide. Is the LCD. <clears throat> Do you have that written down? You ready to give this a try? Let's go back to our, our, our fractions here. We got 7 eighths, we got 11 sixteenths. What's the largest denominator? 16 is the largest one. We're going to start with a 16. You start finding multiples of 16. The first multiple of 16 is 16. That's itself. Then you check all the other fractions and you see if it divides that number. Does 8 divide 16? Yes. Yeah, well, we're done. We, we look for those multiples. If it divides it already, that itself is your LCD. So we'd say, okay, largest number is 16. Check to see if 8 goes into 16. It does. Right there, you know that 16 is your LCD. So automatically we're done. We go, okay, we didn't even have to find another multiple. We're going to write LCD. is 16. That's the first number, the first number that both of those denominators divide. Is there anything smaller than 16? that both 8 and 16 divide? No. Is there anything bigger? Sure, there's lots of stuff bigger. There's 32. There's 64. There's lots of stuff. There's, four, there's 40, 48. There's 48 that works. Do we want the biggest denominator or the smallest? So don't give me stuff like 64. Don't give me 18 times 6. Oh my gosh, sorry, 16 times 8. That'd be way too big. We don't want that. 
That's huge, right? We want the smallest one. So here's how to find the smallest one. You start with the largest denominator, you find the first multiple they both divide. That's the smallest possible thing. You're not just in the business of multiplying denominators here. That you might have been taught that a long time ago, that to find a common denominator, you just multiply this by 16 over 16, you multiply this by 8 over 8. That will, that will work. But it will give you huge numbers. Huge numbers. We don't want to deal with that. We want the smallest we're ones. We're it makes it easy. Number two or right now, I'm not concerned about the numerators. All I care about, we're, we're doing step by step. I'm just worried about the denominators right now. We're just worried about that. I want you to be able to find an LCD, and then I'll build off of that. You ready to try a few more? You sure? Do you have questions on that one? Okay. We'll do one more, and we'll stop there for today. That's where you're supposed to go, aww, aww, I don't want to stop, this is fun. Right? Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You bought your pumpkins yet? I think I was wrong about that, by the way. There's plenty of pumpkins. I see them all over. Okay, we're going to find our LCD. So the first thing we're going to do, Locate your largest denominator. Notice how the numerator really doesn't play a part in this right now. We're just looking at the bottom of our fractions. What's the largest one? So we're going to start finding multiples of 20. Here's the first one. The first multiple of 20 is 20. Does 12 go into 20? No. Does 12 go into 20? No. What's the next multiple of 20? 40. Is 60 the lowest common denominator? I don't know. We're going to find out right now. Hold up. Just hold on. Wait. Does 12 go into 40? No. So you have to keep going. What's the next multiple? Does 12 go into 60? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it is. That's the LCD. You find the first one. 20 didn't work. 12 didn't go into that. 40 didn't work. 12 didn't go into that. 60, 12 goes into that. That right there, that's your LCD. So we take the largest one, we find the multiples, the first one that they both divide, that's your LCD. The reason why we don't start with the smallest denominator, you have to do more, more multiples. You have to do more work. You have to do 12, 24, 36, 48, and 60 before you found it. This is less work. Start with the biggest one. How many people are still we've talked about today? Good.